Good afternoon, Maverick Traders. It's the 12th of May. It's Thursday. Joe with you here once again. Let's get into a market roundup. I've got my two cents on the markets. Take it for what you will. Take responsibility. All right. So market analysis-wise, what happened? Well, we did see an end-of-day rally. That was pretty impressive. It didn't come on a lot of volume. Uh, it didn't change much on the volatility index, but it did happen. Guys, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ actually finished where they're pretty much flat for the day substantially lower it looked like another day that had gapped up and it was rolling over and it was just going to fall apart and for some reason lo and behold we had a nice rally into the close what does it mean i don't know tomorrow will tell so we had jobless claims come out slightly higher ppi in line with expectations but still showing expansion not as bad as the cpi with the year over year going from 8.6 percent down to 8.3 once again, guys, I made the analogy of that is better than being on fire falling off a building. It's just that you're still on fire. So, yes, we've got our own problems over there. Let's just leave it aside. Now, the advanced decline line and above and below the 50-day moving averages, I saw a huge turn in the advanced decline line towards the end of the day, which shows me there was a big push to the upside. That advanced decline line was pretty much skewed 60% red, 30%. Uh, green, or you know, I can't do my math in my head there, folks, but you get it. So it flipped over with a lot of trades, or I should say, a lot of stocks coming off their lows uh, to close a little bit higher. Now, above and below the 50 day moving average didn't change. That's still super ominous, which leads me to believe this was just an, a relief rally. Or, more specifically, let's zoom into the chart a short cover rally. Take a look at what happened on Friday with that, that little inside day there on the SPY. We gapped down on Monday. We got Tuesday and Wednesday. Sell, sell, sell. You hit targets. What do you do when you hit targets? You can't hit the register. You got to cash out. So this could have been just a huge amount of short cover rally into the close of the day. It was a very ominous day. We gapped down. We were trading lower. And then right there at the last hour or so, we had a huge surge to the upside. Now, the volume wasn't super high which leads me to believe it was not much more than a short cover rally or maybe some speculation off the bottom. I, I don't think so with the latter uh, due to the fact that uh, I think these I think uh, traders know that these markets are in sell mode. Here's the NASDAQ, did the exact same thing. <clears throat> We're below the support levels on both. Taking a look at the heat map, not a lot participated. I should say the ones that didn't were the larger caps, the Microsofts and the Apples, they stayed lower. I'm sure they came off intraday. You guys could look at the five-minute chart and 10-minute chart. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking overall. Did they change their overall trend? And the answer is absolutely not. It's just a big surge into the markets all at once at the end of the day. Not much to look into except for this. No fear. There wasn't fear at the beginning of the day. You could see the high of today's candle, right, that shadow below 34. Even with the gap down below support, there was an active selling. We didn't see a spike to 36, 38, 40, and so forth. It was pretty mellow. And take a look at the last few candle, uh, I should say volume bars through these candlesticks. The volatility index is showing complacency. I know it's high. I know it's in the 30s. It's active selling. There's a difference between active selling and panic selling. We are definitely in active selling, but we are not panicking, even with yesterday's failure and today's gap down. Well, where does that lead me? Well, Leads me to believe that overall, these markets have not capitulated. We're below moving averages. Prices is falling apart. So I am still super bearish. I talked even yesterday in the midweek that I was expecting a bounce. In fact, I kind of wanted it yesterday because I got a pretty good list of bulls. We've been sharing that with you guys for the last week or so. However, it didn't happen. We rolled over and we gapped down even lower today. So I'm still looking for that bear rally. I'd love to see a move up to the 430, to the 410. I would love to see that because now it'll give me a higher probability of a rollover, especially if volatility stays where it's at in the volume. Complacency, arrogance allows us to sell further down. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. I know that's a little ominous, but that's kind of where I'm at. A cool indicator of whether or not you should be buying or selling or so on and so forth is when your trades trigger. Now, we've got all sorts of different types of triggering when it comes to Maverick and you know the way you guys trade. But when none of my bulls trigger and none of my bears trigger, it's a day that I should not be trading. I did see a couple of really good trades. MRK to the upside closed on the high of the day above the previous day's high, showing some really good strength. 
definite outperformer. I've been drooling to buy this when these markets decide to bounce. I'm still sitting on my hands with this one. On the other side, we've got the KNX trade. This is a breakdown that was actually confirming and looking beautiful. This was a trade that you're keying up, you're ready to get into it, and at the end of the day, this thing comes uh, craning back up to close above the previous day's low. It was beautifully triggered. It was below the previous day's low with an increase in volume, and it completely turned around. Is, is it still on my bear, bear list? You bet it is. What I'm worried about, folks, is I'm going to miss this with a gap down over the next day or into next week. That's okay. We can let it slide, but it's on my list. Newmont, this is one we talked about when it comes to the relationship it has with gold, the commodity, which is doing really well. Why isn't it doing well? It's a company. It's got overhead. It's got employees. It's got all sorts of things it's got to deal with. Just because what it's mining is increased doesn't mean that this is making money. But what I did like about it is it was already bleeding below that $70 support. Gap down, increase in volume, sure. Folks, we might have missed this move to the downside because it does have support there at 65. You can see it set that at the beginning of January, mid-January. However, we could play this as sideways to down. Why don't we play this as a credit spread below 70? The risk reward is going to be inverse, right? We're going to risk a little bit more than, than what we can gain, but the probability of this staying below 70 with a weak market is pretty high. So there's a couple of ways to play every sort of trade out there. So the markets are still searching for a bottom. Yesterday, I'll say it, I thought that yesterday was going to be it. Didn't happen. Today is very promising with the gap up and the retracement. However, that could roll over because we didn't get capitulation with the VIX. We didn't get a volume spike. But we could see a very weak bounce. And that's what I'm after as a bear here, folks, with this bearish trend. I'm after a weak bounce. So I'm hoping uh, we get that over the next tomorrow and into next week. So, jobless claims up slightly, PPI in line with expectations, that's all set aside. Earnings, there's not much out there. These markets are kind of in their own mode. They're in sell-off mode. We know inflation is a problem. We know that jobs are a problem. We know the economy is not going to grow as fast as inflation is. We know the Fed is hawkish. It's out there. We got a war in Ukraine. There's enough. So, let's just see where these markets go and kind of throw that aside and just kind of trade what's in front of us. Uh, play it, play it step by step, move my by move, and we should be all right. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.